So we have done intersection and union of sets before. You just didn't know that's what you were doing. So we're going to use these examples um, where they're using E as 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. L is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we're treating O as 1, 3, 5. Okay? And this time we're including the 0 as opposed to um, last time. So the intersection of set A and B is called A and B. And it is denoted with that little um, upside down U, remember? I told you if you have this upside down U and you can draw a line through it and make it an A, that's and, right? So that's and. So either the word intersection or this symbol, either of those mean and. And what we did with and yesterday is we said if it's in this one and in this one it has to be in both or we can't list it, right? So A intersection B or A, this intersection B, means A and B. So it has to be an A and in B in order for it to be counted. So here we want to write the intersection of E and L. So intersection of E and L is E intersection L. Now you tell me what elements are in there. What's in E and in L, Alexis? 0, 2, 4, 6. Zero, two, four, six. So the intersection of E and L is 0, 2, 4, and 6. So we list ones that are in E and in L. So intersection is and, union is or. The great thing is on your formula sheet, you guys, you don't have to remember the word intersection and union, which, form, which symbol goes with it, because it says here, intersection is this symbol. And if I drew a line, it would make an A and it would be and, right? Union is this symbol. So if you can't remember which symbol goes with union or intersection, it's on your formula sheet. Go find the symbol, okay? It's not like you're not going to be allowed it. You'll be given it for every test. Union of sets. The union of set A and B is, is the set A or B, and it's denoted with this upside down U. For the line, it doesn't make an A, so it's a U. So it is the set of elements that are members of, the, of either set A or B, or both. So or is either set or it can be in both, but I count it. So anything that's in set A or in set B, I count. Even if it's in both, I still count it. That's the problem, is that people think they shouldn't count the ones that, that are in both. No, you count anything. Anything that's in set A or in set B, I write. Okay? Even if it overlaps. So use appropriate notation to write this union of set E and L. So E union L is the same as E or L. So, Cody, what's an E or an L? Or. In either or. What is in either or of them? All, what's in both? So, 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 8. So or means in either or, I list it. So if it's in E, I list it, or it's in L, I list it, right? So or is usually bigger, more stuff. Yep. So it includes, so you just basically go to E, write down what's in E, go to L, write down what you haven't written, right? So you write down everything that's in both. And if there's overlap, you just don't write it twice, you write it once. That's union. Disjoint sets. Disjoint is huge to memorize because they've given questions on the diploma which will say which of the following sets are disjoint. If you don't know what disjoint means, not answer the question. If you do know what disjoint means, it's easy. Disjoint means that there's nothing in common between the two sets. If you ask what's an E and an L, you'd get the empty set because there's nothing in common. Okay? No elements in common is disjoint. So how do you check if something is disjoint? The intersection of the two sets is in the empty set. So if you do like E and L, if there is nothing in common, it'd be the empty set, it'd be disjoint. So which of the sets up here are disjoint? Which of the sets up here have nothing in common? O and E. 
So how do I prove it's disjoint? I go O intersection E. So what's in O and in E? Nothing that's in O is in E. Nothing in O is in E, right? So it's the empty set, which means O and E are disjoint. Exclamation mark, because it's so important. So that's another one that everyone forgets about, the word disjoint, right? Disjoint means no elements in common. Subset is that other one that I said everyone forgets about. At least subsets on there, you can see the symbol. Disjoint isn't. Disjoint means nothing in common. The intersection of the two have, is the empty set. Next page. So now we're going to use a class example. Um, so our universal set, the U with the little lines on top, because it has some little lines on top, because U without lines means or, or union. So U, the universal set of the natural numbers less than 20. So let's list them. Natural numbers less than 20, what do we naturally start counting? One. And less than 20 means we don't include 20. Okay, then we have these subsets of the universal set. A, B, and C are all subsets of the universal set because they all, everything in A is found in the universal set. Everything in B is found in the universal set. Everything in C is found in the universal set. So actually, A, B, and C are all subsets of the universal set. Okay, that little sideways C. So A are the natural numbers less than 20 that are divisible by 3. So which of these numbers can we divide evenly 3 into them. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. Divisible by 3 means I can divide by 3 and I won't get a decimal, right? Natural numbers that are divisible by 5, 5, 10, 15. And then multiples of 6, 6, 12, and 18. So we have them all listed. Now I want you to tell me which elements are in A intersection B, which means A and B. Right, we can turn that into an and word. Joe, which ones are in A and in B? In A and in B, what numbers are the same? Try again. Look closer. Yes. 15 is in A and in B. Now, A union B, A or B. We list anything that's in A or in B. So it's going to be a lot. We just list it. all of the values in A and all the values in B that aren't in A. So 3, then 5, then 6, then 9, then 10, then 12. 15 occurs in both, but we still only write it once, and 18. So or usually has more elements, usually. The only time or wouldn't have more elements is that if every element in both of them was the same, right? Then and and or would have the same amount. Now this one is the complement of A and B. The best way for me, I always find to do these, is to actually, I need to list what's in the complement of A. And then I can find, compare what's in A, complement of A and B and see what overlaps, right? So the complement of A is what's in the universal set but not in A. This means not A. So in A, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. We need not A is all the ones that are in that universal set up there, but are not 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. So not A is 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, 11, 13, 14, 16, 17, and 19. So those are all the values that are not in A, but are in the universal set. So now they want to know, Parker, 
what values are not in A and in B? Which numbers overlap between not A and B? 5 and 10. Because this is and, right? We can make an A out of it. So now I want you to tell me which is what's in B and C, what's in A or C, what's in A and C. You do that. Sam, what's in B and C? Nothing. So we write squiggly bracket, the zero with a line through it, because the empty set. So there's nothing in B and C that's the same. A or C grant. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. So anything that's in B or A or C, we list. And then A and C, uh, Kate. 6, 12, and 18 overlap between A and C. Now the bottom gets a little more complicated. You have to do the set in brackets first. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do B or D first. They listed D here for us. So B or D I'm going to do first. Because once I find what's in B or D, then I'll compare what's in A and in B or D. So I have to do B or D first. So in B or D, I list anything that's in B or in D. So 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 18 are all the elements that are in B or in D, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be. It can be in any order. However, it's easiest to compare when they're in ascending or else you might miss one or so. And now we want to compare what's in A, in a set A. A has 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So we want to know what's in A and in B or D. Because this is an and, remember? And. So we want to know what's in A and B or D. Well, what overlaps between them? 6, 9, nope, 12. 15, oops, and 18. So 6, 12, 15, 18. You try number two. So we have to list all the elements that are in A and B first. So Colleen, what's in A and in B? Just 15, right? It's the only thing that overlaps in A and in B. And then D is listed above up here. So now we want to know what's in A and B or D. So A and B has 15, D has all of these, and I have to list every element that's in both of them, right? So basically it's D plus the number 15. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 18. Now this next one is a little trickier. Um, 
the first thing we have to do is list what's not in A and what's not in B so we can compare what's in both of them. So I'm going to do not A down here. Well, I did not A up there, but I'll do it again down here. Not A are all the values that are in that natural numbers less than 20, but not in A. So 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, 11, 13, 14, 16, 17, 19. Those are all the values that are not in A. And then we have to list all the values that are not in B. There's going to be even more. Because B has 5, 10, and 15. So everything but those numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now we're trying to find out which of the values that are in A and not B. I'm going to do that over here. Because if you didn't notice, there's a little not symbol out here. There's a little tick out there. So we have to do what's in A and not A and not B. So which values are in not A and not B? That means which ones overlap between them. So the values that overlap are 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, so 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, not 9, not 10, 11, 13, 14, 16, 17, 19. So 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 11, 13, 14, 16, 17, 19. And if that was the if that was all we had up there was not A and not B, we'd be done, right? But it's actually not A and not B. The not version of that. So what it actually means is you have to list everything in the universal set. That's not in A and B. So now we just go and we list everything in the universal set that's not in here. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7's in there, 8's in there, 9, 10, 11's in there, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And that'll be the answer to that one. And then here's your assignment. Rest class. And tomorrow you'll have a little daily quiz on all of this stuff.